<laughs> what up, y'all? It's me, Keisha, and I'm here with this week's All T All Shade Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Season 2 Premiere Review. Oh my god, Love and Hip Hop Hollywood is back. This is one of my favorite franchises. Well, actually, it's my number two favorite franchise out of the Love and Hip Hop when I love Atlanta, then Hollywood, then New York. Um, the season premiere was everything, it was nothing but foolishness, ratchetness, weaves. Bad weaves, honey. Sideburns, skin, ass, tits. Woo! Bottoms, tops, honey. Birds, baby. Let's get into it. Out in BTW, this end of the summer makeup tutorial will be up tomorrow. It's Demi Lovato. Cool for the summer. Inspired. Get into them eyes at Halo Affair. Okay, let me stop playing. Let's get into it. Okay, so as soon as the episode started off, we saw the cast members on the beach. It was Moniz, Tiara, and April, and everybody was serving us long, silky hair. Some there, some wasn't. Swimsuits and bodies and shit. And we soon noticed that Tiara Marie is a part of the Lane Brian Ashley Stewart Club. This bitch, the gang of the couple, LBs. Oh, since last season, but it looks cute on her. It fits her face. She's not like wobbly bobbly spilling all over the place. She's solid with it. It looks cute on her. It doesn't look bad. The edges, however, though, in that wig and that wig, girl. I mean, you can't have no silky straight wig and then your sideburns looking like McGruff. <laughs> like it's, that just ain't the move, girl. The ladies all get to talking about Princess and Ray J and how they ask uh, Tierra Marie if she's over Ray J. She's like, yeah, I'm done over that. Fuck that nigga. I'm through with him. And they bring up the fact that, you know, uh, this was sometime last year or early this year. I forgot when it happened. When Princess got uh, arrested for supposedly, allegedly beating Ray J's ass. So, Tierra Marie was just like, she don't really give a fuck about none of that shit. She don't feel sorry for them bitches because last year, they was accusing her of beating Ray J's ass when they was in a relationship. And so, this is basically karma coming around to bite them niggas in the ass. I'm team Tierra with this shit because fuck Princess and them old pork chop ass sideburns and fuck Ray J and his little sawed off ass. Fuck both of them niggas. Them niggas belong with each other. So April goes on to say that she's having a princess pampering party or some bullshit and that she wants all the girls to come and she lets Tierra Marie know that she invited princess. And so Tierra was like, I don't give a fuck about that bitch coming as long as that bitch stay away from me. As long as she don't bust the move, we good. Then we switch to Hazel E, a.k.a. Humpty Hump. And child, did y'all get into her commentary wig? That bitch tried... Everybody in America, overseas, on a different planet, life, honey, with that damn commentary wig. That bitch tried it. She had on that old ombre ass, black at the roots, platinum blonde, asymmetrical bob wig. But she had it so far down on her forehead. Then you saw the seam of that bitch. I could have swore for a second or I saw the goddamn me tag and that motherfucker. Like that wig was fucking atrocious. That bitch tried it with that bullshit. Hazel, no better, do better. Each one teach one, my nigga. So she goes to the studio to go meet up with her homeboy, Milan, who is a producer or a rapper or some shit like that. All I know is that little nigga looked like a goddamn chocolate tussie roll, a motherfucking chocolate ass penis. Like he just was chocolatey, milk chocolate. I just wanted to take a bite out of his little ass. Um, like a little Kit Kat, little Hershey bar, little Twix. So when she walked into the, the studio room, uh, Milan was in there producing a track for a rapper who was inside the booth named Miles. And now Miles is a little light-skinned Tenderoni giving me Al B. Shore, Christopher Williams, Steph Curry realness up in this bitch. Derek, Derek, what's that? Derek Rose realness from the uh, Chicago Bulls. And so he and her rapping a bippity bopping and shit. And I was like, oh, so these gonna be the gay lovers that's on the show. So they did finally put a gay couple on Love and Hip Hop. And I'm like, oh, okay. So this them niggas. All right. So Miles leave out the booth so Milan and um, Hazel Lee can talk and get, catch up on girl time and, you know, spill the tea with one another. So basically, um, 
Hazel was telling him that she wants to make amends with Tiara. He like, bitch, don't do it. Fuck that bitch. I'm telling you, don't do it. She gonna bop you upside your head like she tried to last season. Don't do it, bitch. But if you do, it's all on you. Don't act like I ain't warn your ass, girl. So, although Milan is trying to play it off to the cameras like his boo is a girl, I already knew that it was that nigga Miles. His little light skin ass. So, Hazel asked him what's going on with him and his relationship. He was like, girl, a bitch is in love. I'm ready to get married. I'm ready to have kids, child. And I'm like, well, good luck with that, honey. The heart wants what the heart wants. <laughs> So we see Princess in her commentary and she's basically rehashing the incident about her and Ray J getting into the fight and her <laughs> dumb ass getting locked up behind it. Uh. And so she tells the camera that she got locked up after they had that big ass fight. And then after they broke up, Ray J bitch ass goes to TMZ and lies and tells TMZ that this bitch cracked his skull, fractured his ribs. Gave him a torn ACL and shit. <laughs> like, she just fucked him up. Black design, chipped his tooth, everything. And so she like, you know, he really hurt her. She don't know what she gonna do. And so, I'm like, bitch. If you even got the question or ask or wonder why or even try to contemplate a reason to take this nigga back after you done got locked up behind this nigga, like, that's your, that's the rock bottom right there. When the police get involved and somebody get locked up, that is God telling you, bitch, run, bitch, because it's only going to get worse from here. So Ray J comes over to Princess Spot because he wants to be back with her and he just cannot live without her. And he's mad at himself for the way that he treated her when she got locked up and shit. So she comes and opens the door. And he says, princess. <laughs> and that nigga couldn't even get the line out. Like, when he hugged her, he had a grin on his face. Cause he knew that shit sounded weak as fuss. He was like, princess. <laughs> it's like, why does this nigga sound like a lesbian? I just don't understand it. So he comes into the apartment. They sit down. And she's like, so tell me what happened, you know, on your side of the story that night we got into it he was like so i went to go pick up your food you know i went to the soul food spot and then you know some kind of way i ended up at the strip club and shit just went down a nigga got turned and i'm like wait a minute hold the phone jesus how do you go from picking up my greens dressing fried chicken my cornbread my good pound cake, my nigga. How do you go with picking up my sweetie pies, my nigga, and detour on the east side to bottoms up? How did that even happen, my nigga? They two, what, what the, explain this to me. Now I understand why this bitch beat, her, beat his ass, because the bitch was hungry. You don't fuck with nobody food when they hungry, especially when you about to get you some good old soul food, some good old collard greens and cabbage, my nigga, and some ham, and this nigga didn't come back with her plate. You needed your motherfucking ass beat. Shit, I'm hungry. Shit, I will whoop your ass off GP just for princess ass. So, princess is like, I just need to know who you are, Ray. Because I feel like I don't know you. All I know is this Mr. Turn Up guy. The, for the cameras, all I know, I don't know you. If you don't know this nigga after all these years, bitch, then what is it about him that you want to fucking be with? It can't be his looks. I mean, he cute. But he ain't all that. He's my height, nigga. Like, what the fuck, girl? So Ray J tells her, I mean, you ain't get with no square. <laughs> I was like, what? Girl, Sonya. I know Sonya, Ray J, and Brandy Mama just be sitting back watching this shit like, Lord Jesus, where did I go wrong, Father? Jesus be a fence. So Princess Bitch Ass gets to crying and she's like, I just can't. I'm not going to continue to go through this with you. I just want to know who you are, Ray. I was in a holding cell for 24 hours behind this shit. Why would you do this to me? And he's like, why you doing me like that? Stop, babe. Stop crying, babe. Why, why you doing me like this? Stop. And as he's trying to comfort her, I refuse to feel sorry for this bitch. A, because she's just stupid. And B, her cousin, her sideburns. Her and Rashida, I hate them both for them thick-ass sideburns. Cut that shit off, my nigga. Your hair line should not be all the way over here by your goddamn cheekbones, by your motherfucking contour, by the end of your eyebrow, bitch. Cut that shit the fuck off. 
Everything is good for Omarion. I'm so happy for him because I like the way he did Love & Hip Hop last year. He set his career up by doing the show, showing how good of a family man he is, how good of a boyfriend he is. He went in a bunch of foolishness. He was the voice of reason. And that catapulted his music career and it took off. So kudos to you, Omarion, for doing reality television right. Then we see April um, at Omarion's show when she goes over to Nikki Baby. And Nikki Baby turns around to the camera and I'm like, whoa, this bitch has got more work done on her face. That bitch nose was as thin as Michael Jackson's before he died. I was like, what the fuck? Where is this bitch nose? And then on top of that, she got her nose done and then had the nerve to get it contoured. What the fuck is the point, my nigga? If you gonna get a nose job, there's no reason why you should be contouring your nose after a nose job, my nigga. Like, her nose is damn near fucking invisible. I'm like, this bitch just is determined not to breathe. She just don't want to breathe. Like, everything about her just feels sucked in and, like, the air is gone. Like, she, I be feeling like at any moment, the bitch is gonna pass the fuck out because she hungry. She can't breathe. Her ribs is gone, goddammit. That ass is too fat. Them titties is too big. Her clothes is too tight. Like, that bitch is gonna pass out one day. All that her in her head girl i don't even know girl but she cute for the most part somewhat kind of she started to look more and more like her mama though like bitch you need to stop now because you ain't even 30 yet and you doing all this shit to your face what the fuck you think gonna happen to you by the time you hit my age 34 my nigga by the time you look hit you hit 34 you gonna be looking like some play-doh play a uh, play set and god damn it girl you better stop we see my girl Monice and I love Monice just for the simple fact that bitch can read for filth and she's funny as hell and she has a really good singing voice but other than that the bitch is crazy so she's on her way to the airport to pick up her boo and as we all knew her, her boo is Richie Dollars from Love and Hip Hop New York I don't understand it Jesus I don't know what's going on in the world I really don't I don't know if bitches just, just giving up they just gave up on life Gave up on finding true love. They just settling. Because I don't understand. What about Richie Dollars? Is attractive. Like he has Medea lips. He has Tyler Perry lips. Everything about his face is wrinkly and droopy. And just. He has a stroke victim face. I just. I don't. I don't get it. Like everything is just discombobulated. And just weird. And. I don't know. It just ain't right, Jesus. Like, how do you sleep with that nigga? Like, disgusting. I'm disgusted. They get in the car, and they're heading to her house, and she tells him that she want to fuck with her grill on. I'm like, girl, fuck that grill. You need to fuck with a blindfold on. Like, ew. Like, ugh. Ain't no way in hell I want to be in missionary position and look up and see Richie Dollar face above me humping me. Girl, I would kill myself. I will just grab something and just stab myself in the neck. Like, ugh, disgusting. So then we see Ray J on the yacht with Princess. And Princess got her ass out to the camera. That bitch just trying to get chose. And he's just professing his love to her and telling her how sorry he is. And he's determined to do any and everything to be back with her. And that he's willing to give up his bachelor pad, his apartment to be with her. And... This bitch is soaking up every fucking minute of it. She just grinning and smiling like, I got that nigga. My pussy is gone. I got that nigga wrapped. He wrapped her all around my finger. And I'm looking like, bitch, you're stupid. You're dumb. Ain't no way in here I could sit there, even this close to Ray J, and have him talking that old L.A. <laughs> gangsta shit to me. And take this nigga serious. Like, I'm laughing just thinking about it. Like, I could never take that little nigga serious. Like, he's a joke to me. Like, he's funny as fuck to me. Like, I might fuck him. Let him take me out to dinner. To a couple of red carpet events. But other than that, like, nigga, no. I could never fall in love with you and take you serious. Like, everybody at this point should know what Ray J is and what Ray J does. Like, he's a fucking idiot. Like, girl, get the fuck out of here. Oh, my God. So, then we're introduced to a new character this season named... Amber. So, <laughs> Amber, my nigga, is in the booth and she ripping and rapping and hipping, hop, hipping, hipping, hipping to the hip, hip, hop, and don't stop and trying to give her best look here, Foxy Brown impersonation. And so, this bitch on commentary talking about how bad she is and how pretty she is and she's that bitch and getting to her and she slays all day and what i was just like girl you look like a number two pencil like what the fuck is like 
she was giving me struggle face like everything about her was a struggle she like she has fought all of her life to get to where she's at right now like she didn't when she talked she spoke like she had a permanent dick in her throat it was like really moist and snotty and it was like it was like something stuck back here and then like her face was so weirdly made it was like permanently stuck back here and it it, it was i didn't i didn't know what it was it was it was just like she her body was here and her face was back here i didn't under, i don't oh god it just make my she reminds me of genuine's wife the rapper solo what was that what's her name solo or whatever the fuck a soleil yeah soleil she looks like a worser version of soleil because y'all remember soleil was funny looking as fuck but this bitch takes soleil and runs with it the opposite way like that no girl no so i was like oh okay put two and two together she's miles beard so miles goes on to say in his commentary how they went to high school together they used to go with each other and this this and that and so but how they ain't together no more they like the best of friends and then they switched to her commentary and she's saying how you know she loved him she want to be with him she thought they was gonna get married she's ready for the ring and how lately he's been being distant and I'm like, girl, he's being distant because this nigga's over there getting his back cracked while you waiting to get your back cracked by this nigga. He's over there getting all the dick. All the dick you want, Miles is fucking getting. Miles is over there getting it in, baby. So we go to April's Princess Pampering Polly Wanna Cracker Slumber Party, whatever the fuck it was. And so... Tiara Marie shows up. She got a little cute little jumper like she got it from Wet Seal or some of the plus size section. And it was cute. She had her pull back and look ponytail. Her face was big. She was giving me plus girl size relics. I was like, hey girl, join the club. So she comes in. She sits down. And Princess goes over there. She's like, hey Tiara. And Tiara was like, hey girl, how you doing? Like, what the fuck you doing talking to me, bitch? And so Princess sits down. She's like, you know, I just want to talk to you because I feel like a lot of shit has got misconstrued between them. You know, I ain't never really had no problem with you. My only problem with you was that you told Ray that you was going to punch me in the face next time you saw me because you thought I got rid of your purse. And so Tiara had to check her real quick. was like, hold up, boo. The only reason I say I wanted to punch you in your shit because your nigga told me that you threw my purse away. Now, if that was supposed to be your nigga, he should have had your back and should have threw you to the motherfucking wolves. Which I 100% agree. He was trying to start beef between you two motherfuckers for the show, which he did. And you two motherfuckers turned up behind this nigga, which y'all dumbass fault. Sierra goes on to say, you know, y'all was up here trying to call me abusive, acting like I was motherfucking... Lorena Bobby and shitting on this nigga but really in all actuality your ass is over there Ronda Rousey and this nigga and so she's like girl that ain't true you can't believe everything you read you know what I'm saying that ain't true I ain't put my hands on him it was a lie it was a lie it was a lie and so she was like well look you saying it's a lie girl but that ain't what your man put out there. Your man is a fame whore. He's a media whore. And he was wrong for running to the media and saying that about you if it wasn't true. And even if it was true, he should have put you out there like that. Which I 100% agree. But this is Ray J we're talking about. This nigga whole career since If I Had One Wish has been about reality show, turn up, and media ploys. I mean, that's what his career has become. So, Princess starts crying again. And she's like... And Tia was like, girl, you crying? Like, what you doing, girl? Like, we getting our nails done. What you, is the fumes getting to you? What's, what's wrong? And so she was like, girl, listen. You all right? <laughs> and Princess was like, no, I'm all right. I'm okay. And she's like, girl, no, you ain't. Because <laughs> your eyelash about to fall out. She was like, listen, girl. You deserve better than this. I'm telling you first hand because I done been there, done that with this nigga. He will try your life time and time again. You better run while you motherfucking can, bitch. And so Princess says in her commentary that, you know, she ain't never been told before that she deserved better. And I'm boo-boo the motherfucking fool, bitch. I don't care for you or them old fake-ass crocodile-ass tears of yours. All this crying she doing this season. You want crying last year, bitch. Girl, only reason why you crying because you realize you want some more camera time, bitch. And you want that paycheck, bitch. Girl, get the fuck out of here. Bye for princess. Bye for princess. I don't, girl, bye. 
So then we see Lil Chocolate Milan, Lil Chocolate Dropper, get out the shower, honey. He wrap his little towel around his little waist. And he goes into his little bedroom and he his baying her, his boo. And so he tap his boo on the butt. And then who flips the fuck over? It's Miles. And I'm like, up, oh, told y'all. So Miles is like, I was asleep. I really ain't trying to get up right now. Like, what's up, baby? Like, you ruining my beauty rest. And he's like, listen, this is a beautiful day outside. It's a beautiful morning. Mm. He was like, let's go to the movies or something. Go to the park. Let's take a long walk around the park after dark. He's like, listen get out because I ain't trying to sit up in this house cooped up all day and Miles is like you know we can't do that we gotta stay in this house can't nobody know about me and you because I'm on the DL my family don't know my sisters don't know none of my friends the industry can't know because I'm a rapper and there ain't nobody gonna take no gay rapper seriously which is some bullshit.com the world is evolving people are being way more accepting of gay um people so i think that's just a cop out get the fuck out of here look at people like frank ocean and all the other people out here that are gay girl get over it stop it you just don't want you want to have your dick and your pussy and eat it all too and have your booty lick so stop it, mouse so malai like girl i ain't trying to hear all that i want to be with you i'm tired of dicking you down on a regular i'm tired of eating your booty like groceries I'm tired of choking you up at night. I need for this to be a lifelong situation. I'm tired of being your secret. I got a secret. It's here in my heart. And I can't even tell my friends how much I adore you. And feel the same. That's some old Kelly price on y'all ass. I don't know shit about that. But anyway, so he like, girl, I'm tired of being your secret. I want the world to know about us. And if you ain't gonna show the world that me and you are in love, I don't want to be with your ass anymore. We gonna call this shit quit, quits. And Miles in bed looking like, girl, you said the same shit last week. Soon as I suck you off, you gonna forget all about it, girl. Stop with the foolishness. Good to see uh, Mona Scott putting that in the forefront. I just hate that it has to be a situation where one of them is on the down low and fucking with a bitch and fucking with a nigga. Like, oh, I hate that part of it. I just wish both of them would have been out and proud about it. Um, even though, from what it seems like, the Miles dude isn't having sex with the Amber girl. I hope he's not. But we shall see, because we all saw it all in the previews for the season. Her old Maury Povich ass moment where she runs out the building crying and shit when she found out this nigga's gay. So I don't know, but I'm happy to see that they're trying to, you know, show gay people in a positive light. I hope that that's their intention because, you know, I'm all here for the gays. I support gay people, lesbians, everybody. I don't give a fuck what you like. It's your prerogative what you like sexually. It's nobody else's business. So, um, then on to Princess at the end. Princess finds out about one of her girlfriends named Peso that um, Ray J is at his apartment throwing a one last hurrah party and she gonna be there. So, conveniently, this bitch pops up, walks in on Ray J, turned up with a bunch of strippers and his partners and shit. And this bitch flips the fuck out, walk in, throwing buckets of water and shit, throwing Gatorades and Limeritas at motherfuckers. And so he like, babe, what you doing, man? What you doing here? Like, how do you even know I was here? Like, what you doing, babe? Calm down. And she like, nigga, no, you fucking calm down. She's like, hey, strippers. Hey, bums. Hey, bitches. I'm like, girl, you can't call nobody no bum bitch when you running around behind this little... Kevin Hart looking wannabe motherfucker. Like, girl, bye. He like, why you even hurt? Why you pop up? And she's like, because you a bitch-ass nigga. He's like, okay, since I'm a bitch-ass nigga, now I'm going to show you this high term. This the real me. You want to know the real me? This the real me, cuz. And so she's like, you know what? Fuck you, Ray J. It's done. It's over with. And change your socks because your socks is dirty. And then somebody out the back say, no, bitch, your feet are crusty. And I was like, and so Ray just like, uh-uh, we ain't doing that. Uh-uh, hold up. Next thing you know, Princess throw off her Chinese slippers and run over to the beach and try to fight them. And they get to try to fake banging and shit. <sighs> Stand it, Jesus. I was laughing. Whew. The first episode gave me life. I got to watch it again because I couldn't even pay attention to everything because I was tweeting and Facebooking and writing down notes at the same damn me time. So, I'm so excited about this season of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. So far, so good. April was giving me life for her look. She's so beautiful and so pretty. Um, yeah, my next book 
Emotionally Unavailable will be out soon, so be on the lookout for that. Follow me on Instagram, Keisha Irvin, K-E-I-S-H-A-E-R-V-I-N. Same thing for Twitter, same thing for Facebook. I love you all. Have a great night.